Hi and welcome back to my next video. We are in for a treat today. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I'm making new friends with Richard and Chris. We had a video we shot with them earlier and they were still in their tent. And so we, we did a review of them living on their motorcycles on their in their tents. And now they are no longer in a tent. So welcome to the show. I'm very glad you're here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're very really glad excited to be here. To be here. <laughs> So we've kind of done the interview before, so we probably don't have to go all of it in depth, but uh, you are on motorcycles. So just yes. briefly recap for us how that happened. We originally looked at getting into a big fifth wheel and you know having a toy hauler and a big truck to, to drag it all around. And then we just realized that that was gonna be too much. And we literally looked in our garage and saw that the two, saw the two bikes in the trailer and said, you know, these are paid for, let's just see what happens for six months and we'll, we'll go out. And to back up just a little bit, we kind of thought that we were ready to stop working. We're not at retirement age. We had a little bit of savings and we thought, let's just take the summer off. Let's hit the road. Let's see what we can see. And let's see how other people travel. Maybe we can do this as inexpensively as possible, which led us to and your channel. That's where you came in, where um, we gleaned a lot of information from but we, your channel. We didn't want to wait until we were retirement age. And, you know, riding motorcycles is a little bit more strenuous, requires a little bit more muscle power than riding in a car. So we wanted to do this while we felt we were still young enough to be able to hold the bikes upright, I guess. <laughs> And then we, since we didn't know what we wanted to do, we thought, well, we don't want to spend money on stuff. And then we've heard horror stories of people going out and buying these big RVs and then they're not happy with them. And then they're either stuck with them or they're selling them at a loss. So because we owned the two motorcycles and the Bush Tech trailer, we thought, well, we'll just buy a tent. We can be out that cost. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, then all we've lost is the cost of a, of a tent. And you gain so many memories. That's yes. a pretty fair trade. Yes, yes. absolutely. Very fair trade, for right. sure. Right. For sure. And so you are risking almost virtually nothing, and you're finding out how it works for you. Absolutely. Correct. Yes, because we can. You know, we jumped out of the workforce. We both have skills. He, you know, he's a he's I'm in a refrigeration technician by trade. I always knew that. Yeah. yeah. I'm an accountant, so we knew we could jump out, and at any point we could jump back in if we needed to. Even do work camping or whatever. Yeah. You know, we knew we could do something. So. And did you keep your house? No. Sold no, the house. We sold the house. Sold you the were house. pretty well all in. Yes. So we we were all in. We made this plan. You always have to put a date to it. So we put a date of April 1st and 2020, 2020. Yes. So we put a date April 1st and April 1st was coming, came in. And about a week after that, we both quit our jobs to finish up the details of the house. Three days later, they shut the country down. Right. We thought, oh my gosh, is the house going to sell? You know, cause who knows? Well, it was such a crazy time right then. And 12 showings and eight offers house sold in three days and we thought well i guess we're going now we're stuck <laughs> oh, now we have to go <laughs> so we left we held up for a little bit since the whole country was closed down in new mexico at a friend's house but then shortly after that about 30 days later yeah. we started traveling so that was in april and now so it's nearly a year what's so mm -hmm. what is it 10 9 10 11 10 months? months yeah mm -hmm. and uh what do you think Love Big it. bad decision, good decision? It was a good decision. It was a we, very good decision. We went out, <laughs> it was a very good decision. We went out with the thought of, well, we'll stop in August probably and figure yeah. out our next step. Because we went out in the tent, we knew the tent was never going to be a permanent solution to how we wanted to live. And August came and went. We looked at each other like, well, we're kind of not quite ready. So we kept going in the tent probably a little longer than we wanted because right. it started getting dark real early and we're sitting inside the, the nights tent were much longer and it was cold <laughs> yes. we didn't have heat we didn't have lights and and so we mm -hmm. finally said okay we have to do something different and that's when we were at a motorcycle campground the blue ridge in the blue, blue ridge. ridge and we yeah. saw a camper set up similar to that and we're like well we could travel like that they have lights we could get a little mm -hmm. mr buddy heater and it stays nice and toasty warm and we are still riding the motorcycles yeah. we weren't ready to give up the motorcycles i i upgraded the solar i added another 50 amp hour battery to it and um now we have a heated blanket in there so we've got a heated blanket underneath the bed and it's uh, it's very toasty, even in yeah. the cold nights. So you have a little bit different relationship with comfort and safety than probably most people who are watching. Is that a fair statement? 
I think so. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think so. We do travel differently than most motorcycle riders yes. in that we will go and we'll set up a base camp. And we did it even in the tent. And we could right. be there for three, four days, even a week. And we explore the area. If the weather's bad, we'll just hunker down just and hunker wait down. it out. Yeah, um, and you have to, there's always a compromise. Yes. So what do you want? You know, is it, do you want to have, be able to travel all around on a motorcycle? And or, see and, awesome sights. And see awesome sights and get in places that big 50 foot rigs can't get in. Or, you know, what do you, what do you want? What do you, what do you want to choose? It's, it's your story. You know, you got to create your own thing. So what we have found is that we try not to look at the discomfort and focus on that. We try to look at the things that are going well for us. And that just totally brightens up everything that we're doing. What makes it worth it? There are sacrifices mm -hmm. and you just keep a good attitude towards them so they don't keep you down. But why is it worth it being on a motorcycle? When you're on a motorcycle, you are much more in tune with everything around you. You're your eyes are always moving. You're always busy. You're alert. So you're st you're paying attention to your everything around you. So it's just more where you're in a car you can you can get kind of lazy. Well, you know, make a sandwich. Man. I mean, they'll that's... Tesla's got one that'll drive for you. I've seen people make sandwiches while they're going down the road, and I'm on two wheels going, "Look at this guy! It's making a sandwich." <laughs> so... I, know, I think you just you, <laughs> your senses experience yes. what's going on around you a whole lot more. And it just kind of gives you that extra spark. It's extra adventure. Why don't we take a look at okay. your bikes? Why don't you show us what you're on? And then we'll take a look at the trailer. So uh, tell us about your bikes. I ride a 2007 BMW. It's K1200 uh, GT. And the reason I chose my motorcycle is because I love how it makes me sit. Uh, it's not a cruiser style. It's more of an upright style. So I just like the have the feeling of the bike more in control underneath me. And it's a dream to go around corners. Right. And the power just coming out of you it oozes power. Oh, absolutely. Roll the throttle and away you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, her bike is very fast. And also has an awful lot of uh, safety features that most of the BMWs do. Yes. Uh, Analyte brakes, all that stuff. Yep. And heated grips, heated seat. So I oh stay my. nice and warm and toasty. Com yes. Comfy and safety. Yes. They and really Richard, are. you are chosen an equally wonderful and fine advanced. Oh, oh sure. Uh, advanced okay. machine. It's a 2009 Harley Davidson Road Glide. I've opened the air box. I've added a, uh, I've got a tuner on it. It's had a couple of little minor issues, but for the most part, she's a truck. It's basically yeah. a truck. I tow the trailer. I, she, the, the new trailer with all the gears right around 500 pounds. Um, with the, my tongue weight is right about 60, 55, 60. It ranges depending on how much stuff we have in the dry box on it. But it, I raised the handlebars. I got some taller handlebars and it's just been a pretty good machine. I'm, she's comfortable. It's, I fit, it fits me, you know? Right. But hers is fast. Hers is fast. <laughs> so when I'm pulling the bunkhouse in this, I was getting 35 to 38 miles to the gallon. I was getting 61. Which I, but Chris is getting 61 oh with my. hers. So yeah. she's not getting anything. And she has a six gallon tank too on it. So. Okay, and you've got an amazing camp. Let's take a look at your camp. Welcome to our 2008 bunkhouse yep. camper. Like I mentioned before, we have a, an actual table now. So table's nice to sit at. I can actually edit videos and um, got a real chair to sit at on it. Uh, it's got, it has a king size bed. All the storage is underneath here. You can see that. And that's an awful lot of storage. Yeah, there's 21 cubic feet of storage in here. Mm -hmm. Um, back over here is where I have the battery and all my solar power. These little hanging shelves. And you got a huge amount of overhead room. I mean, yeah, it's a lot. A barely lot. touch the roof. Yeah, and we have some twinkle lights that go around, and this uh, this fan here has a has a nice bright light on it. The the screened in porch that actually has a screen that goes all the way around. This is my favorite because we knew when we were going to travel the southwest we knew there wasn't going to be a lot of areas for us to cook on up north we could find stumps rocks whatever to set up our stuff a little shower here i use this little bracket i clean up here and i hang my uh i'll hang the shower bag on it mm -hmm. so we can stick it in here and have a shower mm -hmm. this is a dry box we it's a cooler we took off of the old the old trailer but I mounted it on here and I, I insulated the top of this and we don't keep ice in it, but it, it 
it keeps the heat out. It's just a dry box. Right. It's a nice dry box. And this is actually the tongue of the trailer. Yeah, yeah this is a, a Heim joint that we I installed on this because there's no there's no slop in between the pin and the joint. So, you know, the trailer doesn't rattle on the back of the bike. And right. you're just using a bucket of some kind, I'm assuming? Yep. yep. Exactly. Right. That's what we all do. Yeah. A lot of us do. <laughs> yeah. That's what they do. <laughs> so what you do that and shovel. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. And uh, you've got uh, your solar set out. Yep. Nice. I have a uh, 100 amp hours of battery, a uh, 500 watt pure sign and inverter, and a solar charge controller. And two, those are two 50 amp hour lithium phosphate batteries. Nice. That I have. So it seems to run all of our computers Chris's computer, my computer, charging up everything. This is our water supply. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, that's a water would be on a motorcycle. How much water are you carrying? Three so, gallons. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I'll carry this dry on my bike until we get somewhere close. And then we will find, you know, a water source. What we're discovering out here in Arizona, we're worried about water, but they have these water kiosks everywhere. So we'll just go and fill it up. We'll hook it on the back of my motorcycle and I'll drive the short distance out to our campsite and set it up here. And this will probably last us at least two days, if not two longer, if we're real conservative with the water. And so are these tent uh, trailers, uh, tent trailers easy to find? We found this one online in Aztec, New Mexico. Bush Tech purchased the bunkhouse brand and then shelved it. They decided not to, to go forward with it. So they're no longer manufactured. And I don't believe Aspen is manufactured either. But there's a lot of other campers. There's Leisure Light that's still in business, Quick Camp. Are, in business, are still in business. Um, we found this one used, and I like this one because it had more storage space for what I wanted to do with the batteries and, and whatnot. I, I knew, kind of had an idea what configuration I wanted to use. Well, it sure makes a fantastic home. It's just yeah. uh, really, yes, really, thanks. really great. Yes, thanks. We're very, we're very happy with it, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a game changer. It's nice, you know, I, some people are saying, well, with all that extra weight, is it really worth it? You know, and I'm, my response is, I got a king size bed I can snuggle with my wife now. Yeah, that says yeah. everything right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you end, go. And also, the setup and teardown is a lot faster yeah. than the tent was. Yeah. Of course, people can follow you on your uh, YouTube channel, which is Two Wheels Big Life on the YouTube channel. Same with Instagram and Facebook, Two Wheels Big Life. We also have a website and spelled out two or the number two wheels big life will get you there also okay go check them out because it's uh it's an amazing journey yeah it's pretty fun we're having a blast yeah. so yeah. thanks again bob thank you so folks i know you've uh, you've enjoyed this and and saw some great ideas if you did like us on youtube subscribe to the channel hit that thumbs up button and we'll talk to you later thank you so much thanks thank thanks you. again